Hello everyone. So few days back we have Adolus region Northern Virginia US East one outage because of a wrong DNS record entry in DynamoDB. Like DynamoDB services was failing because a resource entry called DynamoDB US East one region Amazon AWS.com has got a false DNS record. So how it got that false DNS record? This was because of a race condition. Okay, from here point onwards, one question can pop in our mind that DynamoDB, we have our data, like we have partition key, order key, and then we insert our data in DynamoDB. How come a DNS things come into picture while using DynamoDB? and a company like AWS who claims 99.9 and so on availability has a issue which went on for hours. Like this issue went on for hours and it has expected impacted services like EC2, Lambda and whatnot. Just because these services internally dependent on DynamoDB. So let's study this case and by knowing this particular case, you will be able to produce and develop your backend architecture to prevent any kind of race conditions that AWS has faced. So it, all, it will be always better to learn from others mistakes and then create your system. So, okay. So as, as of now, our premises is uh, concentrated on this particular fact that due to some race condition DynamoDB this particular DNS record entry gets faulty. So now one question can come into our mind how come DynamoDB needs DNS records in the first place? So let's understand DynamoDB in context of DNS records. So how the DNS records are needed for DynamoDB architecture? DynamoDB handles a large NLB fleet. Like as you can see, there are thousands of load balancers which DynamoDB architecture needs to manage. And for those load balancers, it needs some DNS to identify those load balancers. So for first of all, why DynamoDB will need load balancers anyway? So DynamoDB needs load balancer to ensure that additional capacity is handled and hardware failures are handled and to distribute traffic for good customer experience. So let's understand this. We know DynamoDB is just a distributed service which uses B3 indexes. Okay. Suppose this particular node can be in availability zone 1, this can be in availability zone 2, this can be in reason to an availability zone 1. So what exactly is happening here? DynamoDB table data is copied on all three nodes in these particular locations and B3 indexes are also copied. So what happened if I add a new node and this new node will be in region 3 and availability zone 2. Why would I add this particular new node? I will be adding this node so that uh, additional capacity can be increased or a hardware failures can be handled like suppose this particular R2 goes down and we create this new node uh, or to distribute traffic for good customer experience like maybe the customers in this particular availability zone got increased so to serve traffic uh, concurrently and reliably i have created this particular node so when this particular node gets created i will be needing one new dns record entry to point to this particular node like there will be an nlb which will point to this particular node and for handling that NLB, I will be needing a DNS record value. So that's how NLBs and DNS records comes into picture. Like DynamoDB is nothing 
but a code logic with B3 indexes handle so that you use B3 index and go to a particular node point and get your data. Like a microservice can call DynamoDB and microservice in AWS region, a, a particular region, availability zone one can call that DynamoDB data, a microservice in region two can call that data or a newly created replica node can call that data. So this new node creation after hardware failure or increasing customer experience cannot be handled on its own. It needs some load balancer and that load balancer will need some DNS records. So, okay, now our premises are set that DNS records are needed in DynamoDB architecture because it's a distributed B3 index. Okay, so now we know that this particular entry is wrongly added while updating these particular DynamoDB records. So uh, DNS records. So let's understand how these DNS records are updated and what exactly happened. So for updating these DNS records, like uh, handling all the replicas, newly created replicas and all, we need uh, like, suppose this replica is created, then there will be one EC2 virtualized layer on which it will be created and one NLB will be created. So to refer this particular resource, DynamoDB will need a DNS entry. So that DNS entry is constantly updated and added by DNS management architecture. So DynamoDB DNS management architecture. So this is a kind of new concept that's come into picture after US East outage. So let's understand this particular thing. In DNS management architecture, we first have a DNS planner. What DNS planner does is, it monitors health and capacity of network load balancers. Like capacity can be decreased and it can be increased. It can be decreased in hardware failure and can be increased if you create a new replica. So DNS planner is monitoring and suppose one new replica is created and one new NLB is created. What it will do, it will, after that, after monitoring, it will periodically create a new DNS plan. What DNS plan contains? It contains a list of load balancers and their weights, like how much traffic need to be routed that on that particular load balancers it has those entries. So this particular DNS plan is create, created by DNS planner by monitoring the capacity. Okay. So after this plan is created, there must be someone who can implement this plan. So for that, we have second component in DNS management architecture called DNS and actor. Like as its name suggests, it implements DNS plan in Amazon Route 53 service. Amazon Route 53 service, we already know, it is used to map uh, DNS to servers, IPs, and Route 53 service is used to implement routing internally. So this new DNS plan is added in DNS and added by DNS and actor. Okay, let's move forward. So what exactly happened on the D-Day? Like on a usual day, what DNS planner can do? It creates number of DNS plans and those DNS plans is are added by various DNS and actor to Route 53. These DNS and actor works concurrently and they actually handle the critical section problem. Suppose one DNS is updating, it applies a lock and then updates its records and after it's released a lock, the another DNS connector can update. Also, there is a setup in the DNS connector service by which 
only the new DNS plan is can be can overwrite a old DNS plan. Suppose it's an old DNS plan plan this particular thing. It's written in the row 53 and after that a new DNS plan comes in. It can overwrite that old DNS plan. So what goes wrong on the issue day? Like on the day of the issue, DNS and actors were getting lots of delays. Like how you get delay? You get delay when one DNS and actor is working and another one is waiting for the resource. So on that day, DNS and actor was facing lots of delays. So DNS planner has uh, generated lots of DNS plans and then DNS and actors started implementing those plans. So here we will understand the core reason behind the race conditions that happened. So race condition happened because uh, take example of two DNS and actors, a DNS and actor with plan V1, a DNS and actor with plan V2. Plan V2 is newer than the plan V1. So what happened is DNS and actor with plan V1 was waiting for route 53 resource and DNS and actor for plan V2 was updating it. Like in the first step, an actor applies newest plan, which is V2 in the route 53. In the second step, an actor satisfied the plan is implemented in route 53. So after that, after an, an actor implements his plan for Route 53, it also fires a cleanup process. And that cleanup process uh, deletes the older plan, which are which is older than the plan that that particular an actor has implemented. Like in this case, a cleanup process of second DNS an actor deletes V1 plan because it was many generations older than plan V2. Like here in the step three, after the second step, when an actor satisfied its plan is implemented, it released the lock in the route 53. After the lock is released, this DNS an actor V1, which was unusually delayed, applied its much older plan V1. Like V2 plan was overwritten by V1 plan. Now, they already had the check that a older plan cannot overwrite a new plan, but that check was not working for reason for that thing. I will explain later, but first we will understand it by this information that plan V2, which was new, is overwritten by the plan V1, which was old. So at the third step, uh, unusually delayed an actor applied its much older plan v1 after that the v2 an actor initiated a cleanup process like each an actor after it has updated its plan it fires a cleanup process and that cleanup process checks any plan older than that particular an actor plan and deletes it so what happened here the, at first step, DNS implemented its plan. At second step, DNS an actor satisfied its plan and implemented and released the lock. After the lock is released, this older an actor faultingly updates its older plan in the route 53. After that, it released its lock. DNS an actor v2 fired the cleanup process and deletes v1 plan because it was many generations older than its own plan v2. Like if v1 plan is here and then v2 cleanup process is fired it will obviously delete the plan of v1 because it is older than its v2 plan assuming that my v2 plan is in there so let's remove the older plan although the v1 has already overwritten plan v2 here so what happened after this system was left in an inconsistent state that preventing sub subsequent plan updates by DNS and actors. So AWS in their official statement has said, after the cleanup process of V2 has removed V1 plan also, no other actors apart from V2 and V1 were also able to
to update the route 53 like that region is not explained in much detail how after mess created by these two other enactors was not were not able to update row 53 but after this cleanup process this particular race condition was generated and dynamo db for us east one was no longer uh, connectable so after this mess was created this cleanup process of v2 has deleted all the dns records it was only uh, fixed after a manual intervention okay so let's now understand how plan v1 which was old was able to overwrite plan v2 so how second enactor was able to apply old plan although there was a check which ensured plan is newer than the one applied this check went stale yes this was the core issue the check which was there which checks the newer plan is not overwritable by older plan went stale why it went stale there was only there is only one statement in the official error uh, statement shared because of high delays in enactor processing like here the enactors were processing by waiting for the lock release the service which checks a uh, plan older cannot update a new plan went stale because the enactors were delayed so this region like high delays in enactor processing how they cause this particular service not to work properly is also not explained in detail in their official statement but it is a uh, kind of understandable that it was actually only this particular service which caused the issue which checks that a newer plan cannot get overwritten by an older plan and later on this whole thing impacted ec2 lambda and other services because these services use dynamo db internally in their architecture so that's all was about the recent us east outage if you have any thoughts or any questions please comment them down below thank you